Okay, welcome everybody to Hope at Home, bringing Hearts of Hope Family Grief Camp to where you are. Our guest today is Roxanne Storms. You can read all about her in the bio um, below this recording, but we will get right into it. So good morning, or wait, this is afternoon. It's morning for us. We're actually re-recording this because the internet ate our last recording. So for Roxanne and I, it's, it's early in the morning. When you're seeing this, it'll be afternoon. So anyway, hello. <laughs> hello, hello, Roxanne. Time. It is so good to be with you. So good to be with folks bringing hope to home. All right. Let's, well, let's start. Let's go with our first question. What, uh, what feelings are normal when someone is grieving? So we know that, that grief hits us emotionally. I think it's really important to remember that grief is a holistic experience. And so it's going to hit us in every aspect. So it can take us by surprise if we are physically feeling off. We have headaches or stomach aches or just tired or lack of energy. Those, those so much could be related to grief. Grief hits us in our head. It can be hard to remember or to focus or to concentrate. That's, that's a pretty natural and normal experience when the grief takes so much energy. It is not easy to grieve. It's the hardest work that we'll do. But if we can go into it, allow ourselves to recognize, okay, this is happening. Go with the wave that's watching you over, knowing that just take a breath and be there and you will see your way through it. And, and grief, it does, it does ease. I like that you said it doesn't, it doesn't end, but it eases. It, eases. it, gets, it gets better. Can quarantine cause extra emotional issues for someone who's grieving? Oh my gosh, you take one of the most difficult experiences of your life, the, the death of this loved one in whatever relationship that you had there. And then you magnify it by everything that's going on in the world and things intensify. And so where we um, have additional worries and stress and anxiety and isolation and fears and cutoffs and um, added challenges with maybe not being able to go out and about as we are going to be sheltering in place um, very, very soon in Minnesota. And then more people that might be in the household, if it's kids or working from home or not being able to see neighbors or friends or family or elders, everything right now in normal experiences is intensified. And then you couple that with your grieving experience and just to know that if you are feeling overwhelmed, if you are feeling flooded, again, be with that as hard as it is. Find those ways of just bringing it down just a little bit, just step by step. Come down one step, we can, we can stand there and then we can come down another step. Good, good. Um, what would you suggest a person do if they're struggling with grief during quarantine? The same way that we do in all things. Um, be with it, recognize it, honor it. Reach out for support also. We might not have those same avenues of in-person support, but support is there. Professional services like um, therapy services are going to telehealth. And telehealth is like the next best thing to being there. If, if you have that capacity with just an internet connection and an email, it's face-to-face -face through the computer and it's actually, it's, it's very connective. So if you're, if you need help right now and you're quarantined, you can actually still get professional help over your internet connection or even, I know some of them are actually doing telephone, just plain old. If you have seen a therapist, hopefully your therapist um, or counselor has reached out to you and explained what their agency is doing. Some, it um, depends on insurance providers, some insurance providers, Medicare, which is huge. Um, is allowing telephone contacts. I'm going to be doing one this afternoon. Yeah. Um, most all other insurances are providing that telehealth where if you have a smartphone or an internet connection with a device that has a camera, a laptop, an iPad, um, whatever that it might be, you it's so simple and easy now that you are sent an email for a virtual room. So your therapist or your, that agency will send you an email with that link, you click into it, you go into the virtual waiting room and your therapist will click on when your appointment time is and you do your regular session and you see the person, you can see the expression, 
the quality is really good. Um, if you have not seen a therapist yet, but this is something that would be helpful, they're still taking um, new, new clients through intake for you or services for kids. Um, kids, it, it's just a little bit adaptive because you can't do as much play. But um, so many ways now that we are being very creative in staying connected, that support that is so essential. In grief, we often feel so alone. It's important to know you are not alone. So reach out if you need help. It's still able to get, you're still able to get help even in quarantine, which yeah. is good to know. Yeah. Um, what are some coping strategies in this situation that are helpful? Some things that we can do at home just for ourselves. Um, not only just for grieving, but also just for life in quarantine. What are some things that we can do as adults? Yes. So first of all, let's talk about some grief um, things that you can do. Go into your natural style. So I like to refer to this as um, what, what types of grievers are we? It depends on what kinds of expressors that we are in general. So it's really easy to, to identify um, by looking at head, heart, or hands. If I'm a head processor or a head griever, I'm going to do some things more internally. I'm going to be thinking or reflecting or remembering or just processing internally. Maybe I do a lot of reading. There are so many books and resources that are available. One of our favorite ones is Don't Take My Grief Away From Me by Doug Manning. Um, just, just one out of just an infinite amount of resources. Lots of things that can give inspiration and, and um, connection in whatever way. If we have a faith belief or um, connections with others who's gone through a similar experience. Lots of books and things for our kids. And so um, story books that you could read, activity books, things that you can do to express. And so head grievers are going to be more internally focused. And that's okay. That's a very, very strong, good way of grieving. Heart grievers are those expressive ones. Maybe they talk a lot or they just need to process it out verbally. Um, they might be more emotionally expressive on the outside through tears or sadness maybe journaling, maybe writing, expressing, drawing. Um, those are the ones that it is gonna be really important to seek that support. And then there's hand grievers. So sometimes I can process my feelings through doing. If it is cleaning or organizing or um, scrapbooking or straightening up junk drawers or chopping wood or shooting hoops. We do that a lot at the Hearts of Hope camp with the kids. We know that physical outlets, physical activity, a great way to process our feelings. There's a beautiful concept called cocooning. When we think about a caterpillar and that huge transformation that a caterpillar goes through to become this beautiful butterfly in this new life. So it needs to spin a wrap around itself so tightly because of all of that internal transformation. But we can cocoon spiritually, emotionally, and we can even do it physically. So maybe if you have a special um, wrap or a prayer shawl or a piece of clothing of your loved one, you wrap it around you and you just sit and you just let your mind go, let everything, all the worries and the stress, and you just cocoon for two minutes or five minutes or 30 minutes, whatever private time that you can have. Um, talk a little bit about taking two minutes to take a healing breath. Yes. So, so grounding, so cleansing. We can do it anywhere, everywhere that we are. All we have to do is just to take that little bit of focus, go inside, breathe down from your diaphragm. So a really deep breath. It's a slow, controlled breath. So you breathe, pull, pull that air up slowly into your lungs. Feel and visualize your lungs fill up like a balloon just to expand. Hold it for a little bit and then slowly breathe it out. A more controlled breath, you can breathe out through your mouth. And so as we do this, what we can do is we pair that physical rhythm of a slow breath with a visual image. And so you can give it a feeling, you can give it a word, you can give it a color, you can um, breathe out what you want to release and you breathe in what you wanna take in. So maybe I want to breathe out sadness or pain or despair. So I can give that a color or a shape. 
and I breathe that out. And then I want to breathe in peace and calm and comfort. Couple, the 30 seconds, two minutes does wonders, not only for the body, but it helps to change the neural pathways of the brain. There's been so much research that we can create this new sense of calming, of feeling in control through just this coming into the sense of presence of this mindfulness. Tell me a little bit about gratitude and, and doing an exercise of gratitude and how that can sort of rewire your brain. It fills and expands our heart in, in the deepest and hardest times. Can we find some good things that have happened either in the moment, in the day, in our life? We can think of one to two, three things, three good things like we do at camp. Um, it can be for a smile, for the sunshine. Uh, these days, we are so grateful for toilet paper, um, for running water, to be able to wash our hands, to be with each other, to have this time to maybe slow down to do things. What, what a beautiful ritual to do in the home if you have others, um, is each person share something that, that they're grateful for from that day. Yeah, that's a thing we like to do over dinner. We, it's actually just our grace is that we, is we say what we're thankful for. Well, I am thankful for you and for your time. Uh, thankful for you sharing all of this information with all of our people um, that are following us on the internet. And uh, I hope that you have a great day and I hope everybody else out there has a great day. Tune back in. We're going to be doing these things twice a week. So if you find this information helpful, follow us on Facebook. Click the little subscribe down there uh, if you're in YouTube, which you should be if you're watching this. Um, and goodbye, everybody. Thank you.